Dungeons and Dragons is an incredibly immersive role-playing game. It allows us to tap into our imagination and play again. But the biggest complaint I hear is that it's too complicated to get into. I will demonstrate how simple creating a Dungeons and Dragons character is through race, class, background, and stats. So the game may be accessible to all. I've been playing since high school, and soon you'll be rolling out damage to dastardly foes too. First, each character has their own race. For the context of our discussion, race refers to the differences between elves, humans, dwarves, and so on. No player should feel excluded from the table based on the skin tone they want their character to have. Race tells us a lot about where a character comes from and how they'll be similar or dissimilar to other characters. We'll be using the races in the Player's Handbook 5th edition, written in 2014 by Jeremy Crawford, James Wyatt, Robert Schwab, and Bruce Cordell, but supplementary materials like Bola's Guide to Monsters, written in 2016 by Mike Mer Merles and Jeremy Crawford, have additional races as well, such as the Tabaxi, a race of feline-esque folk, or a Goliath, known for their immense size and endurance. For our character, we'll use the Elven race in the Player's Handbook. There are three variations of Elf, a Wood Elf, a High Elf, or a Dark Elf, otherwise known as Drow. All elves share some traits, like the ability to see in the dark and how fast they can walk, but a high elf has innate magical abilities, whereas a wood elf is naturally skilled at hiding in outdoor areas. We'll use the high elf for our character. The high elf has specific stat bonuses, which we'll cover later. Second, our character needs a class. This isn't about how well they'll be able to carry themselves at parties. However, the class determines where a character fits in the world. Are they a healer? Maybe they pursued the arcane arts instead, or the way of the blade. When choosing a class, there are two ways to do it. Either you focus on a story-based option or a stats-based option. I personally prefer making my choices based on what I think would be an intriguing story for my character. But may, many players may look at a high elf and choose a wizard simply because the racial stat bonuses are in intelligence and dexterity, as well as the bonus cantrip they can get. A cantrip is a spell that a character can cast at will. For the story I'd like to tell with our high elf, I think the fighter class would be the best vehicle. Now that we have our class, we're able to choose what skills we'd like our character to have. Because they're an elf, they're already, um, they're already proficient in perception. Let's choose athletics and insight for our character as well. We know based on the fighter class, that we're proficient in strength and constitution checks. Now you will likely choose a background before choosing your skills, since backgrounds have skill proficiencies of their own. But I prefer to do it last so that I have a feel of what I'd like the character to be by the time I get there. If I've chosen skills covered in my background, I can always go back and update my skills with something new from the class options. Third, we choose our background. Background gives insight to where the character comes from and how their life brought them to the, where they are. The player's handbook recommends the soldier background for the fighter class, which makes sense. The soldier background would show our character has been trained for battle since youth, but following the book recommended background is not a requirement. Let's use the hermit background instead. Hermit is not a common background for a fighter, but the idea of our fighter realizing their people's tendency to be elitist and choosing their mind and choosing to cleanse their mind through martial training is too interesting to pass up. With the Hermit background, we gain access to skills we wouldn't have otherwise, as well as specific equipment like a herbalism kit. Here we can see the um, skills updated based on our background. Finally, we'll find our stats and use this to fill out the rest of the sheet. Regardless of whether you choose a story-based or stats-based approach, you'll want to be sure to place your highest stats where they would most benefit your character. There could be exceptions to this rule. For example, if you're running a game for other players and want them to interact with someone who is bad at their job, you might put stats in places that wouldn't normally make sense. There are six stats total, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Our fighter is very good at their job, so we would want our highest stat to be either strength for melee weapons or dexterity for ranged weapons. The player's handbook has default stats you can use in chapter two, but I much prefer to roll my own. To generate stats, you use four six-sided dice, like displayed in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Yes. Um, and remove the lowest number. 
and the total is one of your stats. We do this a total of six times. We must remember that as a high elf, we get to add two to dexterity and one to intelligence. Adding these to our stats gets the following. With these things in mind, we can now find our total hit points, which is 10 plus the constitution modifier, our initiative, which is our dexterity modifier, our passive perception, which is 10 plus the wisdom modifier, and our armor class, which is 10 plus the dexterity modifier. And there we have it. With this base sheet, you can jump into any story. You can even use this base to create multiple elven fighters using different backgrounds. Here's our final complete sheet with the hermit background. These four simple requirements, race, class, background, and stats, are everything you need to create a functional character sheet. Print out a blank character sheet today and try this for yourself. You never know who you might end up rolling up.